After Randy's passing, Destiny and I laid there for a moment. While she was in shock after witnessing his murder, I was in awe, studying his corpse. I had to appreciate the moment as it was the last time I'd see him so fresh. An undetermined amount of time passed as I watched the blood drip from Randy's mouth in a hypnotic fashion. With serenity, I had neither the time nor volume to watch the blood properly flow, but to see it in that moment was mesmerizing. It was like observing an artist's painting. Smooth, delicate brushes with red paint spread over a blank canvas, noticeable care put into every stroke, an even tone of color throughout the entire picture. Though my brush was a blade and my canvas plastic, both images were masterpieces. With this thought, I picked up Randy to move him back to his original place. Even more blue dripped down across the floor as I carried him. A small puddle had formed at the base of the couch where Destiny had laid. I have to admit, I did spend a few minutes splashing in it. Once Randy had been set down again, I looked to Claire. In the excitement, I had almost forgotten she was there. It surprised me to see her still panicking. Clearly, she hadn't seen the events that just transpired as Destiny had. It was nothing to worry about, as she would experience it firsthand soon enough. Before Claire was to be dealt with, I had to reposition the couch so Destiny could get a better view. Letting another killing go without an audience seemed wasteful to me. I then moved over Claire. She stopped breathing heavy once our eyes met. She was trying extremely hard not to make any sound, as if she thought noise would upset me. Her face looked bloated and as if she was trying to keep something from escaping her cheeks. The only thing she could not hold back were the tears. At this point, she closed her eyes and braced herself for my wrath. It was interesting to see someone attempt to die with such dignity rather than plead for their life. Even though I now respect Claire for her rather unique approach to death, I still deem her foolish for thinking I would have given her a quick one. I glanced at Destiny once more before I began with Claire. The same blank expression laid on her face as her mother was in eyesight, crying. Though I was slightly disappointed that Destiny was not in shambles, I eagerly turned back to Claire. I ran my hands up and down her thigh, startling her in the process. Like Randy, her body language let me know she was frightened. I imagined her feeling like one of her patients in that moment. Laid back on a stiff surface covered in plastic, your health in the hands of an authority figure, and an eerie silence in the clean and orderly room. The situation Claire found herself in might have been uncannily similar to that of her profession, but it was here that her skills were the most useless. With that thought, I took a hammer and broke her kneecap. She too screamed in pain as Randy did before, but the sound I most vividly recall was that of her bones cracking. It was not only a new sound, but a new experience for me. This is why it stood out amongst the shrieks of my hysterical victim. The impact itself was very crisp and quick, but the resulting vibrations it sent through my hand were drawn out and somewhat soothing. It was here that I realized the hammer was the best choice for this job. A blade might have let the blood flow but blunt force had wondrous physical feedback. As I continued to shatter what was left of her knee, I placed my free hand on the undamaged, adjacent bone. I liked the feeling of contrast between what was once two identical structures. In Claire's mind, I liked to think it was foreshadowing of what was coming. However, even I thought it was foolish to believe she could understand the message I was trying to convey, let alone think straight. Despite my best intentions, it was more plausible that Claire had only pain on her mind. So, with that thought, I sought to bring more up. I let Claire rest for a moment. She had already been through a lot of pain, and I didn't want to overdo it. I felt it was better to draw things out like this, in order to save her what little time we'd have together. In the meantime, I stroked her arms and thighs again in the gentlest of motions. I ran my blood-soaked palms down her cheeks and blew onto the back of her neck. To top it off, I cut out a lock of Randy's hair and used it to tickle her feet. 
This dissonance between comfort and agony was something that Claire should have felt lucky to experience. After all, how can one live life to the fullest if they don't cruise the bad parts? <clears throat> then, I took my hand and placed it over her heart. At the same time, I raised the hammer, slowly, and clear eyesight of Claire. Her heartbeat started to get faster and faster as my tool was raised higher and higher. Her pulse was like a drum solo quickening to bring about a finale. It was not unlike a beautiful symphony to my ears, and I was not unlike the conductor of Claire's life. So, with her and my blood both pumping with rapid rhythm and unbridled intensity, the tension in the room grew exponentially. In a way, we were extremely connected in that moment, as our bodies seemed to mirror one another. Both of our foreheads were drenched in sweat, our limbs shook with anticipation, and our eyes contained a deep look of concentration. I felt it was amazing that two completely different sides of the situation could be so similar. The image that kept appearing in my mind was that of a horseshoe. This would be the fourth best experience I felt that night. As these thoughts went on in my mind, I noticed Claire becoming more and more anxious. She started to try and break free of her plastic prison, all to no avail. When she realized there was no escape, she opened her mouth to speak. I don't want, but not quick enough to finish her sentence, nor stop my hammer from bashing her skull in repeatedly. At this point I held nothing back and brought down the blunt weapon with as much force as I could. The efforts of my labor created a wonderful sight, as blood spattered in every direction, decorating the surroundings in red, obscure polka dots. I could feel the strikes being met with less resistance as I smashed the bone and her brain met the hammer. Little bits of gray matter stuck to the steel each time I pulled the tool from her cranium. A blend of blood and brain mush began to gush at the sides. I picked some up and squeezed it in my grasp like Plato. Shards of her skull were protruding and poking my palm. The rusty, intoxicating smell of hemoglobin entered my nostrils as I raised my hand to my face. A relaxing peace swept over my body as I took the deepest breath I could. I then continued my blows into her face and onto her nose. The skin began to stretch and cave in towards the center as the hammer went down harder. The inside of her mouth was now just a bowl filled with blood and floating teeth. Eventually, my arm tired, and I put down my tool to rest. I stood there for a moment, taking in the beautiful scene with all my senses. I looked down at what was once a nurse, what was once a wife, what was once a mother, what was once screaming, what was once terrified. I looked down at what was once a woman named Claire and I smiled.